Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. Welcome, welcome. Welcome back. Oh, hello, hello everybody. To our hangout. Welcome back to another week of CY Hangouts. We are stepping our game up as you see. We got some official backgrounds and official name for our hangout. Um, we've had an official guest this week. Welcome, Jen. Hi. Welcome, Jen. <laughs> our moderator with the most of this. The guest who, who doesn't leave. Wanna... <laughs> What'd you say? I said I'll be the guest that never leaves. <laughs> Absolutely. The, the guest star that becomes a regular. <laughs> welcome, welcome. And we've got Carmen, our fearless leader, Miss Mary Bloyd, and Miss Deb Scott on our panel today. We've got lots of fun stuff to talk about, all centered around my fave and yours, John Yaman. All right. So, Ms. Carmen, do you want to start with the news, or should we save it for the end? What do you think? Oh, oh, temptation. I know, I know you have stuff to what say. What a way to start. I think we can leave it till the end. You want to start, start with, with it? No, let's leave she's it till leave, the end. She's going to leave them hanging. Okay, all right. Well, I'm going to call on Miss Deb Scott. What do you got for us this week? All right. Um, I wanted to talk about... Uh, in the effort to pull our audience in with us, I spoke to um, a lady named Kay, and she watched the last show, and so she, she had a, a comment that I will have be our, our topic this week. And the comment that she was waiting for last week was, what has this romance be so... Um, so addicting because because it is what has it be something that we just can't let go of um and in terms she, of and we're talking about her kenzie kush right now the romance between, kenzie uh, kush. john and sinem right john and sinem um and there's a whole you know i don't want to get into the real and the real which was where she was going how we loved this couple so much but we couldn't accept that that was just acting because, I mean, the acting was so good. It really drew us in. So what we wanted to talk about was what makes this such an epic romance? Um, was it the script? You know, the script bounced all over the place um, with different writers. The acting was phenomenal between uh, John and Sanem. Uh, the chemistry was phenomenal there was a lot that played out with the music i was i was wanting to play some clips of the music tonight but um it messed up my microphone and made it uh squealy so i don't think i can actually rada rada might be able to play some of the music but the music from white wolf um they do a lot of they do a lot of the dizzies they did by Lish as well um but the music would come on and before anything happened, it set the mood and it drew you in, whether it was John's music, uh, whenever he entered in slow motion, I really dig the slow motion uh, scene. I'd like a slow motion button in light. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> wouldn't that be fun? Um, pause, change the channel, I digress. <laughs> Um, so the music I felt had a lot to do with it. Um, and, and back to their acting, I said last week, I believed them when, when they were like just new to each other and, and falling in love. I believed them when they were all the angst. I believed them when they were really angry with each other, man, it sucked me in and I would be, I was in love. I was heartbroken. I was all of the scenarios in between. And I felt like the writing did so much with, with scenes, the, the near kisses, the nose kisses, the almost kisses, the interrupted kisses. Um, 
I could I could probably put together on you know a couple hours of, of shows of just the almost kisses. We love that angst of of ah. <laughs> <laughs> is it gonna happen? Isn't it gonna you know what's it, gonna yes. happen? Uh huh. Get there. Right. Get there. Go. <laughs> and the disappointment. And there's something about never letting us have more than five minutes of a beautiful romance before it comes crashing down again. Um, it, and I always say, I, I really feel like we could tolerate a couple episodes with, of just like romance and a beautiful story, but the ratings do show that uh, <laughs> we have to throw water on it and, uh, and start over again. So I just feel like there was so many ups and downs and ins and outs and almost and and some of the dream scenes. Um, I felt like the show could have gone forever because of that romance. I feel like this could go down, like if if the world got a hold of it, it could go down uh, as one of the great, uh, you know, Pride and Prejudice. If we could get into a novel. I think it would be one of the greats. I, I felt like it was epic and I'm all over the place because there's so much to pull in on the show. So let me ask you ladies, what is it that had you so taken with this romance? Oh, I'll say, I think I think you on a good word just now uh, when you, you said epic and it is one of those uh, stories that you would consider one of the all time great love stories because even as you said um you never really got more than an episode or a part of an episode where they had um consistently happy smooth uh rides going on but even in the moments uh when there was trouble for them when they were fighting when people were pulling them apart the way it was written you got to spend so much time with each individual character and within their thoughts and and watching them that you could see that the love was always, always there. Their eyes never strayed towards other people. No matter how angry they were with each other, they still had this just undeniable pull to each other. So, um, and also, like you said, uh, the ratings show that, you know, the good and the bad, you need that up and down to appreciate the good. Um, you have to see how difficult it is for them to be apart because it makes you root for them and it makes you see that they they absolutely do have to be together you're absolutely right jen that was that constant pull the the differences in the way they were raised you know uh john as his character was raised in boarding school almost you know and heartbroken that his mother had left him and taken emre and uh, left and his father was busy and um, John's character realized that he had to kind of go on his own and let his father go and let his brother go. And then he went on his own and became this real loner, mm -hmm. you know, out on his own on wild places doing photography and all the travel and all of that. But to um, see him just come face to face with something as beautiful, pure, innocent, sweet as the character of Sanem, that he could not help himself. He had to, he had to pursue that love. He had to, he had to go through all of that to try and win her mm -hmm. and uh, against her parents, against, you know, all of the odds that we all know from watching the show, all of the deception the lies that Imre forced Sanem to take on. And, uh, but still, you know, they never lost that draw, that potential for, we've got to fight for this. There's something here. They didn't even, it seemed at first, know what to call it even. Mm -hmm. because it, for her, an innocent girl from the neighborhood, she, this was, an experience beyond what she might have ever even dreamed of as she dreamed of being a writer. Mm -hmm. You know, this was a flesh and blood man of intense proportion that came swooping into her life, you know, and uh, can you imagine? Oh, 
a great love story, just an awesome love story that, that just goes on and on. We never tire of seeing it. That's what, that's how it got to me. <laughs> and it does seem to be the impossible pairing, mm -hmm. um, you know, and they use different ways to bring that in. The albatross and the um, peaky bird, you know, the, the, um, oh, I forget the name of the little bird they called her to begin with. They changed it. The early bird. Went. Right. Um, and you know the poor girl from the neighborhood and the eccentric rich guy um in many different ways the pairing was impossible the interference of the families drove me mm -hmm. crazy oh me too <laughs> oh me my too. gosh that's the turkish dizzy world that that interference from the quote elders oh uh, is just it just always dizzy world just... or is it really that way i feel like they represent what really is happening in the culture. Otherwise, I mean, it's like a constant in every single Disney. So mm -hmm. I'm, I would guess that, that, you know, part of the culture as well. But Deb, what I wanted to say was you at the beginning mentioned um, how this, how we couldn't just accept that it was just acting, but I, I'm of this full of thought that it wasn't just acting. I feel like the reason it was so compelling was that we really were watching the actors fall in love. Mm -hmm. And it, the chemistry was so dynamic and unique. Um, plus the story as well in the writing, I think it all just came together, came full circle, but I don't know. <laughs> I, I agree. I feel like it was such a beautiful story that I actually fell in love with these characters. Not like, uh, like, like I could separate myself from it being a show. I actually fell in love with that part of my brain that, that does that. And uh, I don't think I'll ever let the story go for that reason alone. I agree. I, I fell in love with... I fell in love with lots of things in that show. And I think if I was a master of, you know, putting people together, I would probably pair these two together as well. Um, as human beings, as the energy they have for each other, their compatibility physically and um, dynamically as well, just that incredible chemistry that he even quoted. Um, so I don't, I, I totally agree with you. And that is you fell in love with more than just the characters, or at least mm -hmm. I did. I fell in love with them as people. I fell mm -hmm. in love with them as people, them as characters and them as couple. Mm -hmm. Now, whether right. that was real or not real, for me, that was three loves intertwined into one. And at some point, I think it was so intense you couldn't actually differentiate whether you were actually watching a reality show, whether you were watching episode whatever number, whether this was scripted, was this just them running off the cuff, were they just sneaking in a kiss and the director just said don't bother cutting it. <laughs> um, all of it became like this amazing magic that mm -hmm. I would tune in every single day or at least every week live, um, Turkish time, even despite the language barrier, to just watch it. Um, and for me, I think that was magic. Whether that was planned or not planned, or whether that was just something that happened to the both of them, where they both looked at one another and said, we're going on this journey, and there's no regrets, there's no looking back, um, it was really quite phenomenal to watch. It was really powerful. It was and powerful. It was powerful. It was. And, uh, and, and, and to this day, it continues to be powerful. And it's hard to get over that sort of magic. It's really mm -hmm. difficult. It's really I hope difficult. I never get over it. <laughs> I hope, you know, I will keep the story and take it with me throughout life. I loved it that much. 
it'll be like one of your favorite books that you, you never, you know, go too long without reading. It's something that, yeah. um, yes. you know, you're going to maybe not sit down and watch entire episodes, but you're always going to seek out um, on any given day a clip or a fan yeah. video or someone's fan fiction because you want to explore it a little bit more. And it's just something that you can't get completely out of your system because it's become so a part of um, your everyday life. Yeah. So I did a little road test on this because I thought, well, clearly I'm just one of these helpless romantics, right? I put myself in that category, but I decided to step out and think, let's put someone in that doesn't really get, you know, carried away, who's lived a little, who's seen a lot of love stories, who perhaps isn't as in love with this fine young man. So I gave a Kenshi Kush to my mother. Um, and she's an elderly lady. And I thought, well, we'll see how she gauges it. She's either going to switch it off on episode two and tell me that I'm just, you know, you're hopeless, or we'll see what happens. And my mother absolutely fell in love with this show. And she's been around and watched a lot of love stories in her time. Mm-hmm both in real life, both on screen, some of the greatest love stories, you know, movies like Gone with the Wind and, you know, classics, like still there, still powerful. And she could not get enough of her Kenshi Bush. She binge watched it. She canceled appointments to doctors. <laughs> <because> <laughs> she up at five weird. in the morning because she could not stop watching it she had an internet issue at around episode 32 that i never heard the end of because she <laughs> almost wanted me to leave work and come and fix it so you know two or three people could possibly be love struck but millions millions I- it's funny that you bring up your mom because i watch with my mom and um She's always teased me all my life whenever, from when I was a small child, whatever I got into, I was super into. Like I would wear out videotapes, right? When you still had VCRs and it was actual tapes, she'd have to rebuy them because I would watch them so many times. And she was more the type where she would watch a movie or a TV show and she would enjoy it, but that was it. She's also not always the most internet savvy with YouTube and Instagram and things like that. She was just as was and is just as enamored with this show as I am to the point where I'd be upstairs because we live in the same house and I'd say I hear her watching it again I'd come downstairs (laughs) she learned how to search for videos on YouTube she now can never rewatch enough and this is a woman who used to tease me like you know all my life you're rewatching that again you're rereading that book you're going to the same play how many times um but if it's your Kenzie Kush she cannot see it enough times repetitively and and again like you're saying uh, my mom's you know obviously not as old as yours probably but you know she's married 40 years she's you know not the obsessive type but there's something about this show that she can't let go of either and i want to extend a little more and say there's something about this man you mm-hmm. know off the back of it can she push and my mother watched 52 episodes in very little time whereas i had to endure 52 weeks that's the pain of watching two kids life. Mm-hmm. Um, she immediately wanted to know what the next show was. Like, what what's next? I want to see more. Mm-hmm. Um, so she's now, I think, on series number three where she's watching him. And she just thinks he's amazing. Mm-hmm. Such a connection. And, um, and that's really, really amazing, I think. I think so as well, and I have a following of so many women in their 50s, 60s, 70s, uh, some in their 80s, you know, and these are classic, classy women that are not easily, um, they're swooning over the Mm -hmm. stories. I just, I just find it special in a way that reaches such a broad audience, and that's a pretty rare thing in itself. To reach, to reach such a broad audience across um, the globe. I actually, I'm in New Jersey and um, I got one of my coworkers, he was a, a 25 year old um, man, he's from Jamaica. 
he immigrated here, he was working, and he was looking for recommendations on shows to watch. So I gave him a bunch of Netflix shows, and then I threw this one out at him. I said, look for it on YouTube, you know, as a joke, never expecting that this young man, you know, was going to make it past the first half hour, especially because, you know, there's the subtitles and it's tedious for some people. I mean, he watched it all the way through. He binged it in less than a month, probably. And it was the same thing. There was just, it wasn't the reaction or the experience that, you know, we as women had, but there's something about this story and the characters. And it was interesting to hear his perspectives um, because I don't know many men who have watched it on the stories and the characters and their interactions, but it's just, it's universal. Once you watch this, there's something that just doesn't let you go. You can't not finish it. Mm -hmm. I found that, I found that in my speaking with people of that too, in, in older established men, Navy SEALs, um, you know, uh, that really blew me away that there are men watching it who are mm -hmm. in their 50s and 60s and and men of the world and they're not only just watching the show they're talking about it they're mm -hmm. digging into the fan fiction on on the pages and they're and they're every bit is it as into the show and into conversations as many of the women I know, and that surprises the heck out of me. Mm -hmm. I tell them all the time um, when I hear from them, I'm like, are you real? You know, <laughs> <laughs> like, is this really real? Are you pulling my leg? Really? Because yeah. it's shocking to me. It is. That, that men are this into it. Like, I'm like, you show me. You show me where you're sitting down and watching the show. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> But, and to read fan fiction, for heaven's sakes, it, it blows yes. my mind. It really it, does. That, that is to a whole another level. Yeah. It is surprising. Who it doesn't? It? it shocks me. Yeah. I guess it, yeah. And a little bit lends, in a way, to um, Divot being a style icon. I wonder, like, what degree do, do these men that are interested are looking at the story versus divot as the the you know wanting to be like him or look like him mm -hmm. or you know dress like him and that is not far-fetched i've seen some stories <laughs> of some uh men who took it you know to everything from the hairstyle to the clothes and the tattoo mm -hmm. and everything and the jewelry you know the jewelry yeah for sure yeah. Quite distinctive. He set a he set a trend there. I mean, that's that was a fashion that no man had ever brought out in that way, and he wore it so naturally. Mm -hmm. When he worked so hard to put that character together, you know, everything from his physical body to the hair, to the clothes, to the jewelry, to the boots, to the everything, just phenomenal. The leather jacket. Yes. 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 All of his jackets and the coats and and the sweaters. And it, it felt All authentic. It, it did. Totally mm -hmm. authentic. Yes. That this is who this character. This is what he would wear. This is something that he would have found, um, you know, in this part of the world. This is a ring he would have bought here. It, it was genuine and, and and authentic. It wasn't, um, you know, you, you believe that this is what this man would have been wearing and why. Yeah. And, and clever men out there who are savvy and are, are, are looking at this as not only just a romance that they enjoy, but also a bit of a, you know, let me see what all the noise is about, why mm. all the women looking that direction, um, mm. will certainly be modelling themselves because we are all models for each other in so many ways. And I think, um, you know, Jeanne put so much thought into this character that he knew it would resonate with women instantly um, but he also knew it would resonate with men you know mm -hmm. so there you go and hence why right here right now he is you know a model for one of the biggest shirt companies in in that region mm -hmm. you know That's he is the he is an alpha male without being aggressive 
about it. Without the without being toxic. Exactly. Yeah. He's just so intense and in so much of everything. I don't I don't even I don't even know how you describe that, but he's just he's got such a presence that uh, he doesn't even need to work at it. I mean, it's yeah. just yeah. he was born with it and yeah. he's just walking into it, growing into it. Uh, making it really more and more him as he goes along. He's a phenomenal person. Are we talking about David or Yaman? Yaman. We're actually talking about both, both. because he owned yeah. that and he actually said that there was a beautiful interchange between the character and himself. Yeah. And I think he saw that as he continued after a Kenshi Kush to still be wearing the jewelry, still be wearing the hairstyle still be wearing the swag as he went around Europe and et cetera. So he kind of got it. It was very intuitive of him. And I've seen a lot of Turkish dizzies where actors will finish a role and almost immediately they will have a change of physique, mm -hmm. whether they have a haircut or they step out of character, they shed that character immediately. Whereas he was so intuitive and so sensitive to the fandom and to those that really loved Erkenshi Kush that he continued to the just honour that, okay? He he didn't just say this was a, a role and I'm done with it and I've shelved it. He continued to put out there by him owning it and walking with it to say, this meant a lot to me. I know this means a lot to you. I will have to let it go because parts of my life will take precedent like my military, but until then, I've loved it as much as you love it. And I think that's where that magic was. Again, character, real person, and the lines in between, I tell you. Very blurry. I've, st I've stayed up at night thinking about those lines in between. <laughs> they do blur. <laughs> he, does, uh, he does appreciate so much the impact on yeah. his fans uh, like no one no celebrity i've ever seen yeah no uh, do i mean he embraces the love that they send him and he gives it right back yeah, yeah. he yeah. holds nothing back you know it's a child a woman a man an older woman a younger woman you know he's he's there for everyone i feel he's there and offers himself in the same way Yes, in a way that most, as you're saying, almost any other actor, actress, celebrity, they don't do that. They they keep some type of wall or veil, you know, where you don't get that true connection. But you see that when he interacts with his fans, it, it really is a genuine, a, a yeah. real connection for those yeah. moments that they're together. Yeah. And, and I think, I mean, we've kind of, you know, segued into, um, out of the Kenshi cushion to more about him but mm -hmm. what I like about that continuity is that that sensitivity that organic love that was experienced in Kenshi Kush continues to this day because he's so sensitive to the audience you know if we're happy he's happy and a lot of the time he'll reflect that and he lets us know that he's happy you know if we're hurting he's hurting and vice versa and that's just this beautiful seesaw of actor fandom. And that relationship is so incredibly special that it's why we're still here. Mm -hmm. You're it's so right. really why we're here, you know. Um, and, and honestly, I'm yet to experience it with any of the other actors that I have grown to admire over the years who are super fabulous except they are actors and there's a delinear there's a demarcation line which tells me they're actors yes. whereas with Jean it tells me he's an actor possibly could be my friend he could he's also someone that you could share a chocolate with he's just so many things to so many people that's why we're still here it's something I really, really respected about him. In the beginning, that massive fandom scared him. And mm -hmm. the way he dealt with it was 
to throw himself into the throngs of it and to where his last interview, I heard him say, you know, it, it scared him to begin with and now he couldn't be without it. Yeah. So I love somebody who takes life on like that. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas some people would have drawn back limited access Mm -hmm. that fans had to them. Um, gone out with a lot of security, really put distance, not interacted at all. He, like you said, just threw himself into it and built up that comfort level. And now he's, as Mary said, unlike any other, you know, any other celebrity, there are very few, he's rare. And it's because he conquered that, that fear that you talk about. Yeah. Great topic. He just understood, I, I think in a real way that he has a gift and he can give it to people and he can make a difference in their lives. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that's terribly important to him because he was raised to be a friend, to be mm-hmm. generous, to care about people and uh, to step outside of himself like that. It is just a, a phenomenon that we may never, we may never see anyone again that does that. And you know, who's not gonna give back to that? You add to it all the stories that he's told in his various series. And then our Kanchi Kush just took it over the top, the Jean Divit character. Um, he just keeps he just keeps putting himself out there and he gets so much back because it's so real, it's so honest, it's so straightforward and direct. You know, you see many actors or actresses that will give kind of canned remarks, if you will, to have someone come out to them like he did, particularly when he went to um, to Rome and would walk out into the crowds and just let them surround him. And you know, there was probably a lot of touching going on that was not particularly, maybe the most, you know, a little bit personal. But he never, he never drew back. You know, you never saw a sneer on his face or pushing anyone away. That's just a phenomenal uh, attitude of heart. Mm -hmm. Such a big heart. And and that's another reason why I find such respect for him. It hasn't been an easy road. It hasn't, uh, you know, there was a big falling out after Kenji Kush and there was a lot of backlash and a lot of slander. And most people that I know would have been withdrawn mm-hmm. and, and uh, given up or at least pulled away. Um, and I, he just, he speaks loudly. I said that last week, he, you know, if he has to say it with the writing on his clothes, um, he silently speaks very loudly, but he, but he stays engaged. Uh, he doesn't give up, he doesn't quit. And I have immense respect for that. I recall in one of the recent interviews, he actually said that he considered quitting, but the thought of the changes that he was making in other people's lives really mattered to him. And so I thought that was very profound of him to even acknowledge. Hey, if you guys don't mind, I want to dip into the comment section because we've got some good ones from our watchers. Uh, Miss Doris Johnson said, Ken has the rare ability to insert bits and pieces of his own personality and character to make the role he is portraying his own and only his such as no other could pro- portray it. I agree. Great comment. Yeah, nice comment. I agree. Jeff Spencer said he can introduce me to a new country, traditions, people, actors, and so much more. Mm -hmm. Paula said, I binge watched it in nine days and nights, and I left all of my favorite movie series behind for good. That girl. She would would message me every day and say, oh, this happened, that happened, and I would say, wait a minute, how are you on that episode? That's you know, yeah. where I left you at 11 o'clock last night, you were on episode, <laughs> you know, five. You're talking about episode, you know, 11 now. And she'd say, I just, I didn't sleep. I watched all the way through. Yeah. Wow. So, and That's then she amazing. started so it should, right over We again. should do a poll of who watched the entire series and what time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, how long it took. And declare a winner. 
I feel like okay, Apollo's going to be hard to beat. And no cheating, no rewinding. No I have the old messages as proof for her. That's amazing. Amazing. Okay. Rada, is there any more questions? No more questions from the audience. Um, I know that we dipped a little bit into Divot, and I, I kind of wanted to um, reserve that for next week because I know that Joanne is taking a deep dive into Divot. And, we'll go um, there again. <laughs> yeah, well, always, uh, always able to revisit. <laughs> yeah. Um, you're, Jen, Jen, what did you bring this week? I know that you were going to touch on Divid, but changed your mind and what are we um, going to yeah, do Yeah, we now? flipped around the topics a little bit and, and kind of changed the week so that there'd be more variety um, because mine and Mary's topics were going to overlap a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. So I decided to pose a question that I had been, you know, kind of, kind of stashing away for future hangouts. And I was thinking of, we always see posts, especially in the forums, and we talk to each other about which actresses we want to see him paired up with, right? Because you always immediately think, you know, who's he going to look good in a romantic pairing with? You know, which actress is he going to look good with? Who will he have good chemistry with? But I actually, I'm interested in who, what actors, what Turkish actors we'd all like to see him act against. And um, what made me think of it, and Mary, you'll appreciate this, um, was because I was watching some clips the other day just randomly on YouTube, right? You click on one thing and it leads you here and there. And I fell on... Um, Cara Dye, which I've, I'm halfway through watching. I haven't finished it, but um, you know I've seen enough 50, 60, 70 episodes to um, have been impressed with the actor who plays Mahir's father. Um, I don't know if I'm going to say his name right. Chetin Tekindor. Um, he's done a I'm lot, of, a lot of series. Um, Cara Dye, Asi, tons of movies, tons of um, television series. Um, very, very well respected. Uh, very established and I was thinking he really what I like in particular in the role in Karadaya he takes the time when he's in a scene with someone to really let the scene breathe you know the other actor presents their piece of dialogue they say what they have to say and he doesn't always go right back at it you see him kind of sit and absorb what's being said and really live it um he, he gives the scenes, like, as directors say, time to breathe. And that makes it so alive and so genuine. And a lot of times it's very subtle, which I have found John to uh, do as well in his, in his own acting. A lot of times he's not, um, some of his best scenes are not where he's over the top or yelling or, you know, even over the top in terms of, of love and romance. A lot of his performance is very internal and nuanced and subtle and done through glances and seeing emotions kind of wash over him. So I thought that would be an interesting pairing to see what um, what those actors would bring out in each other in a performance. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering if anybody has an actor, a Turkish actor, that they'd like to see him paired with. Well, I do. I'm new to the Dizzy thing. Um, I've only seen all the way through Akanji Kush and Bayanlish, but I have uh, ha I have also seen Kivanch mm -hmm. in in many things, and I find him to be a fascinating actor. Um, I've just seen clips of his shows, but I know that Kivanch is very well respected and very well established. And so I feel like the pairing between the two of them would be very interesting to witness. So that would be my first choice. Mm -hmm. And he's the original, Tur the first Turkish actor that I um, was introduced to. That's how I started on this whole Turkish journey three and a half years ago. And I agree, he's, he's very dynamic and his acting style is um, different from Jean's but he does completely um, melt into his characters as well, the same way that John does, where you really feel that he's living and breathing these characters. So, um, yeah, like you're saying, to see them on screen together, I think would be a, a, a dynamic, a dynamic, dynamic pairing. Mm. I, I really like the, pardon me, Carmen, go ahead. No, I, I don't, I can't at the top of my head think of an actor that I'd like in 
with that I am trying to rattle through and think quickly on my feet. But I just want to draw attention to some of the pairings that I would never have imagined have worked so magically. And that is, you know, the pairing of him and Emil. I mean, I could watch those two forever. Um, and if you'd asked me that question, I would have actually probably told you you're nuts mm -hmm. um, if you had offered me that pairing. So sometimes I think, um, you know, there's an element of surprise and uh, yeah, that that that's a pairing that I would definitely have never ever put together. That's a pairing I'd like to see on a, a reality show, <laughs> right? Could you yeah. imagine? No, seriously, I, I I love their caravan hangouts. For yes, plus, yeah, know. like a behind the scenes. Yeah, I've watched them a couple of times, mm -hmm. plus a thousand times maybe, <laughs> perhaps give or take. <laughs> I would, um, thinking of, of one of my favorite actresses um, who I recently wrote an article about, uh, Zarin Tekendor. Mm -hmm. uh, she's an incredible artist, if any of you don't know that. She's an incredible painter, uh, yeah. a theater artist as well as a film actress. But, um, you know, she and Kavan she paired together or were in the same series in so many different things, um, Oski Memu being, you know, one of the big ones in my view, but the way she comes across as, um, as a mother, as an aunt, as an older woman, that's a friend. I would love to see her paired with John Yaman. Mm -hmm. I think that would be a magical kind of synergy that would bring some real interest to mm -hmm. uh, different characters. You know, she could be his mother, a teacher, a professor, uh, an artist, he could be, you know, who knows, but I love her. She's, she's so unobtrusive, mm -hmm. but yet she gets her point across and the subtlety with which she does that, I think would very be a very nice match with John. Yeah. 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 She's a very good actress. I agree with you. She's phenomenal. An incredible theater actress. And mm -hmm. I noticed that even with um, the character of Levant and he himself as an actor is a yes. trained theater actor. Um, fabulous, like really beautiful, like really good. And John kept up with him. They had a good yeah. back and forth, which, you know, theater yeah. actors are used to, you know, you could be in a play for six weeks, six months, and even though it's the same play every night, they do, you know, try to keep it living in the moment. So you could tell in scenes that every time they shot um, by Amish, I'm sure he changed it up a little bit because he thinks on his feet. And John was always right right there to react and, uh, and take in what he was doing yeah. and give it back. <laughs> yeah, that's going good. Back to Ch going back to Chet and Tekendor, Jen, mm -hmm. remembering how he was as Nasif for Mayur Kara in Karadai. Mm -hmm. Um, as you said, he allowed, he allowed every scene to breathe. Can you imagine him with John Yaman in some kind of a father son yes. role or mm -hmm. a grandfather grandson role? That would be really fun. Yes. That would be. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I was thinking. I know that John has said that he wants to stay in the romantic comedy genre until he's older. I've already got him cast with Ebo and Eris in some <laughs> type of mafia joint. Uh, <laughs> um, I think the three personalities would be very interesting mm -hmm. um, to watch interact. Mm -hmm. um, would be Ebo is so, uh, so intense. You know, yeah. he's one of those dark types that just you know a look from him and you say what did i do wrong you know yeah. he's very intense. interesting about john is he can pull that as well we saw him he pull can. That, wow. that dark intensity so many times in incursi yes mm -hmm. absolutely even in bay english we saw it right right which one of his little episodes did trigger me a little bit i was a little upset with him when he went off <laughs> 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 as hmm. he 
But yeah, um, I would love to see Eris, Evo, and Jean together in something. And it wouldn't even really have to be a um, an intense drama. But I can't picture Eris and Evo doing anything other than that. So, hmm. perhaps a film, you know, not something even you know a shorter form like a film or these mm -hmm. shorter series now that are being produced. Yeah. That's so, a great question. That yeah. actually kind of segues a little bit into, into Mary, what your topic was going to be, right? In thinking of future really, projects. But it really does. You know, when I've, um, I, I came into knowing Jean Yaman with episode 31 of our Concha Kush. And then I started from the beginning. I can't match Paula, but I binged, I binged all 31 episodes to catch up with what was, you know, then being aired. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I was amazed, astounded, hooked, gone, done. Um, so going back to what John Yaman has done before, all the way back to Badir, in Gunul is Larry, however you say that, um, to see this very young looking man who looked like a kid, you know, he looked like he was 17. And then to go on through Aina Dina Ashk, where he was this freewheeling, you know, fun, energetic, Yellen heiress. Um, and then, you know, to Dolanai, where he was all buttoned up in suits and all of this. And then our country cushion, then by Yanlish, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, what could, what couldn't the man do? I mean, so maybe he wants to stay in the romantic genre right now, the rom-com. Um, you know, that's fine. As he stated once, which I was surprised, because I never thought of it this way, was that people think it's easy to work in a rom-com, but actually to maintain a feeling of, of masculinity and manliness and all of that, it's, it's a little harder than you think. So maybe he wants to stay there for now and do these other roles when he's older. But the way I see him, his physical strength, his uh, physical presence, um, I could see him doing other roles than that that might combine a little bit of both. And um, I'd, I'd like to know what you all think about what you think he could do now that would not be totally romantic comedy but have an element of that, which he seems to really enjoy doing. But what do you think you'd like to see him play before he gets older and maybe goes more serious roles or whatever? What do you think? I'd love to see him do something 007-ish because it's still <laughs> romantic. It's, uh, you know, uh, he's got some real skill, you know, he really works on his skills as self-defense and, and, and mm -hmm. fighting. And I, and it kind of would bring it kind of all together, all, all of the, what he could do, you know, fight and romance and, um, a little sexiness here and there would be <laughs> really fun. I think he could pull it off. Um, as we were talking, um, Gosh, I don't know much about like the, the Turkish military, but Top Gunnish would be really fun too. Mm. You know, those most fly boys are get really out there too. So I, I don't know if there's anything he couldn't do because I did see a lot of drama in um, Erkenji Kush. I, I loved the light flavor of Bayanlish you know, just, just fun and out there. But I saw enough drama out of him. I really don't think there isn't anything that he couldn't do. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think, I think he's done a lot of drama and I know a lot of the shows kind of get um, titled romantic comedy, but I personally, I think of her, certainly or Kenzie Kush runs more of what we would call in the, in the United States um, dramedy, you know, because it yes. really wasn't, you know, like to me, Love Actually, that's a romantic comedy. Um, My Best Friend's Wedding, that's a romantic comedy. 
or Kenzie Kush had so many, so much, um, like you're saying, dramatic, emotional, angsty, deep scenes that to me it was equal parts uh, romance, comedy, and drama. So, like you're saying, there's really nothing that he can't do. He's shown that he can handle all of that. Yeah. I had um, uh, in my mind immediately at the end of our Kanchi Kush and those three children and they're, they're um, you know, getting to an age, they look, what would you think they looked at the end of our Kanchi Kush, maybe six or seven, mm -hmm. trying to guess their ages? I um, I projected in my head that that he would um, the way he loved to travel and the way Sanem wanted to go to the Galapagos and all of that is that they when their children are like ten or eleven or twelve they um, they travel the world on their boat but they get into all kinds of adventures you know and he's teaching the children how to how to take care of themselves how to fight how to uh, survive. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, he's teaching them wilderness skills, if you will, and all of that, how to sail a boat. And, uh, you know, I projected in my head the whole story of him like an Indiana Jones, but having a wife and three children, you know, Tagging with along. him at the time. I thought that would be fun because that would, could be funny, you know, funny in parts, romantic in parts, and then just a great, you know, adventure kind of story. Uh, that would probably be totally far-fetched, but, you know, fun. So mm -hmm. I could see him doing something like that, particularly then thinking of the scene on the island when he and Esgi, as it, Oscar and Esgi were marooned on the island, you know, um, I was thinking of, of that and he could just, he could do anything. I mean, he could do anything. He could play a serious lawyer like Matthew McConaughey does in some of the thing playing uh, Jake Brigantz in some of the John Grisham films. Mm -hmm. He could do that. I mean, he's got that kind of presence and certainly the skills, but um, you know, he could do a lot of things. And 007, yes, ma'am, Miss Deb, 007, yes. <laughs> I'm kind of stuck on Flyboy now. <laughs> oh, yeah. that does yeah, sound good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, and he's got the right haircut right now. <laughs> does be perfect. I got cast in the Robert B. Parker series, Spencer for Hire. Mm -hmm. Yes, that would be good too. Who would be his sidekick there, Rada? Oh, we got to go with Ano for the sidekick. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, oh, that would be that good. That would be hysterical. That would I be mean, too funny. Yeah, that would be great. Well, that was, that was the thought that I had, so... Well, anyway. I have to put it out there and say that for me it would be something really raunchy, something that <laughs> has to do with mafia and yeah. and yeah. affairs and really heart-stopping moments like he's going to get bombed, he's going to get killed, he's, oh, my God, he's not going to go off with her, all that, <laughs> all that, mm -hmm. all that has got me really going like that too. would be awesome yeah yeah godfather's be... type yeah oh that'd be awesome Can like we... i want a series like that mm -hmm. yeah. yeah that if he could be a what in new jersey jen don't you call them wise guys yes the wise guys guys. In the mafia? absolutely wise guys. yeah <laughs> he, he, yeah he'd be a good wise North guy jersey. <laughs> yeah <laughs> You guys, and, and Doris Johnson says, Don Yaman has a wicked sense of humor and cracks me up along with putting a big smile on my face, which paired up with Emil is like adding a bit of whipped cream onto a Sunday. Oh, <laughs> oh, love it. The great love comment. It. Great. Paula says, if John were ever to do a remake of the beloved, remake of a beloved movie, I'd like to see him in a new version of Roman Holiday in the Gregory uh, Peck role. Oh. A brand new actress in the lead. Oh, I'm curious to know what actress, Paula. Um, Anne Bradley Cohen says, I want to see a Turkish version remake of my favorite movie, The Quiet Man, with John, but not sure what leading lady. Hmm. He's got a brave future ahead of him, that's for sure. Yeah. Anything. And we will watch it. 
Yeah. Right. What wouldn't, what wouldn't we watch him in? They'll watch him model shirts. I mean, you know, come on. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the kind of status. What the man does for a I'll plaid shirt. Mercy paint. on us. Good Lord. Phew. <laughs> yeah. It's our current shirts status. Shirts are not Appalachia here, baby. Plaid shirts are cool. <laughs> Roman Jennifer. Holiday is stuck in my head now instead of Flyboy. Ah. Uh, <laughs> to yeah. see him on the scooter going around Rome, yeah. maybe with Tuba. She's got the elegance and the grace of, of Audrey Hepburn. Who mm. wouldn't she be? A, wouldn't they be a pair? Wow. She's mm. a little bit older than him, but she still looks fabulous. She's gorgeous. She just has that, that quiet elegance. Mm hmm. Yeah. That would be quite a pair, wouldn't it? And he does a great job not being pegged in an age. Mm -hmm. You know, he seemed they were brilliant on Air Kenji Kush not pegging him with an age. I, I don't yeah. think they ever mentioned it. And oh. he looks so much older. And mm -hmm. then Bayanlish comes and he is just like carefree and like 10 years younger. Um, it's interesting to me how he, again, pulls off these characters and and fills the role in his physical appearance. It's amazing. He does, he transforms. He's a chameleon. Well, he can't do anything about those shoulders. I mean, <laughs> those are wide and they're gonna stay there, but um, you know, it'd be interesting to see his look in his next project. Mm -hmm. That would be very interesting. Yeah, I kind of feel like we're getting a taste of it in these recent outings. We're seeing him trying all these different. I don't know if he's recovering from bad haircuts or just t trying new things just for the fun of it or maybe prepping for the next role. But we've seen some different looks in the last week or so, I think. And he, shorter. he said um, after Kenzie Kush, um, people would ask him, you know, questions about his beard and different things. And he says, you know, you forget once you're not on set every day where you have someone constantly, you know, grooming, you. trimming and maintaining so that you look the same day after day. Now you have to go back to, you know, doing your own hair or doing so. Um, so, yeah, you get a little bit more, of, you know, a difference every day. Yeah, in some of the pictures lately, his hair looks really short. Mm -hmm. It's probably because no one is styling it in, you know, what we're seeing on our background right now. Oh, I think he's had a haircut. Mm -hmm. mm. Simple as that. I think he's mm -hmm. had a haircut. Um, and since he's not committed to any project, whilst he might have vision, uh, he's just having a haircut. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the normality of all of this. And this is why, why it's, this is another reason why we're still here. <laughs> <laughs> We right. get to see for the first time, and many actors don't give you this privilege, even though there's Instagram and social media and all the rest of it, it is still very much guarded. We get to see that he's had a haircut. We can timeline this man by mm -hmm. the haircut. I can tell you where yeah. he's been on photos by the haircut and what time <laughs> and what year and what month. It's how I search through my photos. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. You know, it's it's you don't get to do that with a lot of actors you know they'll go underground for mm -hmm. quite some time between projects and then they emerge and that's how they've lived but not him you know so it'll be it'll be a good thing to open up whenever we have news because boy there's a bit of news going around girls okay yeah um before we dive into the news i have a bit of a a little something different. I have a quiz for you ladies. Ah! Okay. <laughs> There's Pop not quiz. enough of you to divide up into two teams. Well, yeah, you could team up if you want to, but I'm just going to throw the questions out there and let's see who gets what right. Okay. okay. Are we ready? And ready. audience can participate. Audience can yes, participate. Yes, answer in the comments. Okay. And also, Credit goes to Paula Winans for pulling this quiz together, helping me out. I really appreciate you. Thanks, girl. Um, okay. okay, first question. We all know John DeVitt was a super sportsman. In which pair of sports did John not participate in Urkunji Kus? A, skiing and tennis. B, kayaking and basketball. C, running and boxing. Skiing and tennis. Hey, hey. <laughs> yes, 
Yes, absolutely. It was A. <laughs> Okay, Are we meant okay. to write this down and then we get whoever gets it right or we just oh, yell um, it out? I think we're good just winging it because I only have four questions. So. Uh, okay. Okay. We're good. In the future, <laughs> I want to get a bit more competitive, right? So <laughs> we're going okay. to we're gonna have to figure out how we're going to do this. All right. Okay. Um, John tells Sanam he wishes he could have a voice inside her head. Where are they sitting when he says this? A, in a restaurant, eating by the Bosphorus Bridge. B, in his truck. C, in his kitchen. I don't know. He wished that he could have a voice inside his head? No, be the voice in her head. Inside Remember her the, head. When, the voice in her head. When she confessed the, um, the voice in her head that she sometimes... That she... Oh, oh, the oh. Kitchen. The kitchen. Was it the kitchen? No, that voice was always around. Yeah, but where does he confess in the kitchen? Yeah, I'm not sure. Oh, Paula, where was it? Where did he? Is Paula still Restaurant. there? Restaurant. Is Paula typing, typing? Oh no, did she give the? She didn't give us the answers. She did, but I'm. I'm slow. Okay, she the kitchen. Up. Okay. okay, that one's we'll catch up. to be reviewed, to be reviewed. Okay, here's another one. John didn't spend some of his evenings reading books. From which author does he not read? A, Emily Bronte, B, Charles Dickens, C, Kafka. Dickens, he doesn't read Dickens. Dickens. Yeah, yeah I, was with Dickens. I, don't, I don't recall any Dickens. All right, last one. Ooh. John Dibbett made two drawings during a Kernsey Coos. Which of these was not a drawing he did? A, a drawing of a mermaid. B, a drawing of his father. C, a drawing of Sanam. Sanam. His, his father. father. <laughs> yep. Good girls. Wow. Woo! -hoo! I think you got it. What's the kitchen? That round. Huh? What's the kitchen? Did get an answer to the kitchen? Let's see, let's see if we can get Paula to clarify. It Paula says it was the truck. Oh, oh, oh bugger. <laughs> but it could have been the kitchen, right? It could have been the kitchen. <laughs> they certainly talked about her voice everywhere, right? It could have been any of them. I was gonna say right. I remember them having that conversation more than a few times. <laughs> I, I wish they did more in that kitchen, just quietly speaking. Uh, yeah. Right, is it's yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so, what? Uh, drop drum roll. Can we get some news? Can we get some updates? Oh, so some tea. good What you got, Carmen? Good news. It's <laughs> never ever a slow day at the Yamans. Let me tell you. And <laughs> just as predicted, there is a whole bunch of news around. What is his lifestyle? What is he up to? Why is he out every night? Who is he dating and why isn't he wearing a mask? Well, so I'm just going to put it out there because I will follow this by a long ass post, okay? Mm -hmm. Jean Yaman is a 30 year old young single man who has always enjoyed and has stated that in between his work schedule which we all know is hours upon hours he likes to have his downtime this is his daytime downtime he actually is a bit of a night owl he says that himself he's not a morning person his night fires up probably at around 11 8 p.m and continues till early hours the man goes out it's a very istanbul lifestyle for those of us who don't live in istanbul this is what trendy young people do they go out of an evening usually after dinner and they go and have a drink at their favorite hangout um there's lots of people out there who are now starting to take offense to a lot of the photos that are coming out because they're with different women there's a lot of judgment out there and um, the fact that he continues to photograph and be just as generous with his time 
is just a little bit alarming because, you know, lots of people take photographs with each other in nightclubs, you know. There's certainly nothing sinister about that. Um, and those women are young, respectable women who some are visiting Istanbul and some are locals. And as you may have seen, some of them are celebrities, footy, you know, um, there was the commentator a few days ago from his favourite footy club. Beck who noted that? Did anyone catch that? Mm -hmm. He took some photos with her, Becca Stars, I think it's mm -hmm. called. Um, so there's lots of things that, you know, at the moment are flying around that his career will be affected because of his nightclub ways, rubbish, that Netflix won't pick him up because he has uh, a questionable nightlife, rubbish. I don't think Netflix is looking at his nightlife, okay? Yeah. They're looking at Fearless. his talent. Yeah. And if people stop for one moment, and stop dragging all of this into the forefront and not paying attention to what he does so marvellously, we would probably be way ahead of ourselves. Um, certainly it won't dent his career. It is an acceptable lifestyle. Um, is he dating anyone? No. And if he is, guess what? You're never going to know because he's never going to talk. <laughs> Because right. he's always been, okay? So not every woman that he takes a photograph with he's going to be dating, and that's just a whole lot of garbage. Now, the other news that came past was that, you know, he was going to do an Akenshi Kush-type series with Demet, and once again, that's rubbish. The two of them are not going to be together for quite some time, if ever, in a series as professional partners. Let me tell you that Farouk Turgut is just as clever at watching the social media space as much as Yaman and many others in his inner circle. And they would categorically know that if they were going to pair the two of them together right here, right now, whatever show they put their heads to, it would be a flop because the fandom would make it a flop, okay? There are that many people who really don't want, you know, him to star with Demet for whatever reason, their own personal, that they've jumped on whatever bandwagon, that the actual show would probably not be as successful as it should be. So he's not going to do a show. They continue to grow as actors. Demet has a wonderful career. She's in drama. She's going fabulously where she has chosen to be and he himself has got a fabulous road ahead and the two of them are not going to be paired anytime soon so I'm sorry about that. Um, many will think I hope you're wrong Carmen and hey we'll wait and say but right here right now it's not happening. Um, other news he continues to um, surprise us with Mubby photos if you haven't picked up the pattern as yet every two days we get one every three we get a new shirt. <laughs> the, the highlight was, and this is what I love, I love, I love, I love, and this is what we covered, and that is he's so intuitive and so are those around him. They listen to the fandom. So we had a wonderful Q&A done by Tudors, and I posted some of that in our fandom about what the direction of that collaboration and partnership is all about. Um, good news for all of us that don't live in Turkey. You'll be able to have a global shop when they open that up that'll be so so cool uh you can buy your favorite flannel shirt and wear that to bed or wear it wherever you like i guess um and also a new commercial is coming out if you didn't pick that up there was actually two commercials that were shot and only one was ever screened so i expect that there would be a falls commercial a fall being we're going into the fall season so the the fashion seasons are summer and fall mm -hmm. so I suspect that will come out very shortly I'd love a man in skibby oh my god does he rock a skibby seriously <laughs> I cannot wait for him to have some scarves and oh just the winter gear on him is just gonna rock so that's probably it in a nutshell a little bit of rumor around Italy you know again around Mr Ospitek um, he's announcing and ramping up things with his upcoming movie and he continues to tag 
Jean in a lot of his posts. So that's an indication that, you know, things are being considered if they're not signed and sealed. That's just another way of just adding a little bit of flavour and just keeping us in the loop. It's the subtle things on social media is where you find your truth and your gold. That's all for me. Thank That's you. Right. Bravo. Any questions from anybody? What What is the concern, or rather not, what is the concern? I'm concerned, I know many people are, that John Yaman is going out w without a mask and he's in close proximity to people. He's you not know, going that's... out without a mask. He's being photographed without a mask. So okay. I think what people need to realise very quickly is you're looking at a one-dimensional second in that evening, right? He's taken his mask off for a photograph. Mm -hmm. He probably is wearing a mask at that venue. No one's filming him with a mask. Um, a lot of folks, if you look at some footage that's come out of Ruby, which sort of takes the camera and spans it around, you'll notice that there is masks. In fact, there was a photo of him a couple of days ago and right between his feet was not a napkin, but an actual black mask. Um, so Turkey has mandatory mask wearing. You must wear a mask. He's not exempt from that. Okay, so again, um, there's also an element, guys, of, you know, you have to live within a certain risk, otherwise you can honestly just, you know, get into this mentality that everything you touch and everywhere you go, there is a danger. I'm sure he safeguards himself the best way that he can, um, as we all do. Mm -hmm. But again, just the photograph is a millisecond of one dimensional. You know, he's got his arm on her bra strap, he's got his arm here on her waist, like seriously. You know, it's really, it's out there, it really is. But, and there's yeah. split seconds, especially in photographs, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. That's one second, it just happens yeah. to be when the shutter closes, so to speak. Yeah, you can build a whole story out of a one second frame if you wanted to, right or wrong. So, there you go. Speaking of masks. <gasps> no oh. way. <laughs> <laughs> That's way cool. I got this as a gift. Thank you, Josie. I know you're watching. But how cute is this? Let's see that again. Oh, that is darling. If you have to wear it, have fun with it. Oh, that's cool. So cool. Really <laughs> sweet. <laughs> so, Rado, it. is it really an opportune time to mention, since we've got that mask, about our current campaign? Do you want to sure. just touch on that? just very quickly. Yes, we are um, running a very special campaign that was um, first shared by uh, Jean Yaman on social media. Um, we're supporting a little boy named Pamir. Am I saying it correctly? Pamir? Correct. Yeah. Pamir. Uh -huh. um, he's dealing with a, um, a mus muscular dystrophy issue. Um, he's 20 months old and he lives in Turkey. And we've been offering t-shirts, mugs, masks, um, doggy t-shirts in the very near future with um, a very special design that's really um, inspired by Mr. Yaman. And this is um, a, a fan effort all over the, um, all over the fandom, but um, particularly um, with the t-shirt cell and in our farm <clears throat> that um, is going very well. <laughs> the first night, um, first the first 24 hours, um, I think we, um, well, I think the numbers are um, shown on the campaign itself. Um, I'll just say we did very well and I'm looking forward to um the next five days the campaign will last a total of five days so um the thought is is that if you can get your order in in the next five days that you quite potentially would have your shirt by john's birthday 
and um, we wanted to do a little something. We, we, we got a little something special planned for birthday weekend coming up. So if you can manage to um, participate in the t-shirt sale, that would be wonderful. Um, so far it's um, just in our group. So um, if anybody needs help with orders or has questions, um, I'm available. Just message me, you'll catch me in Messenger <laughs> a lot easier than um, trying to tag me in the inside the group, just message me. Um, yeah. if you need help or have questions. Yeah. And I think it's important to note there's um, a lot of options. There's two different um, picture options in terms of color, and then there's multiple options for the shirt as well. So, you, you know, for the pink picture or the blue picture, then you have multiple um, crew neck or v-neck t-shirts, and those are each in available in different colors in terms of the shirt. And there's, I've seen everything from like extra small, I think up to three or four X. So there's a wide, wide, wide range that you can, you can really, you know, customize it to exactly the type of shirt that you want. I saw some people yeah. saying they were going to order them a little bit bigger and wear them as night yeah. shirts. <laughs> um, yeah. There's the mugs now and the masks, which were not up the first night, but I was quite surprised and placed another order this morning as soon as I woke up and saw they were there. Yes. So, uh, they're exciting. releasing different items slowly, but surely. Mm -hmm. So next few days yeah, there might even be a, a tote yeah. in there and some other stuff but um one thing i one very important thing i wanted to um touch on was the fact that this platform is amazing in that it allows for 100 percent of all the proceeds to go directly to um Paymere and his um, legal guardian so there's no in between the money goes straight to them in Turkey. So um, just to alleviate any concerns about, I know, you know, some fundraising platforms take a, um, you know, hefty percentage, mm -hmm. um, but they're very fair. And of course there's platform fees, but um, they're very minimal and everything else goes to the family. So that's yeah. very important. And I think yeah. we mentioned we have a little a surprise Right, we might be doing a surprise for um, one lucky member. If everybody lets us know who's made a purchase, I think we might be doing a drawing yes. at the end and yes. surprising. Um, so you get your shirt, and then you have the chance to uh, get a little bonus as a thank you. We won't, we're not telling you what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's exciting though. Yeah. Exciting. Yeah. So what else so. have we got that's exciting? I know we've got some bomb stuff coming up in the next couple of weeks so uh, can we talk to... about the, the the thing mm. where we might ask for potential guests to come on with us uh, can i mention that yeah really? of course you can of course you okay can. all right nice. so in a couple of weeks um the weekend the saturday the seven what we're planning to do is a rewatch of the crazy huge um, but we're gonna do it a little bit differently. We're going to do it live, um, hangout style. And um, we want to offer the opportunity for any anybody watching, anybody in the group that would like to, of course we have to cap it at a certain amount of people, but we're looking for some animated people to be on with us who would make the watch interesting and fun and engaging. Um, so wanted to put that out there. We'll be voting on which episode um, here in the next few days. Mm -hmm. so Paul is going to do a poll. That. There'll be a poll on the forum. Yeah. So we got some fun stuff coming up. And I'm super excited about everything that's happening so fast, too. Yeah. So yeah. come and play. Have a good time. Interact. It'll just be a great way to share the love. Yeah. So if you're one of those people like me and anyone that's ever watched a live show with me will know mm. that I am an absolute nightmare to watch live mm. shows with. <laughs> I talk, I scream, I jump up and down. I will not let <laughs> you get a word in. <laughs> I'll do a tweet, I'll do a face post and I might even do a quick edit. So if you're one of those people, 
you're my type of tribe, get on this because you need to be on this live watch. Come on, Ma. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I heard mention of wine and chocolates. I don't, I don't know. We're going to work that in, but. Yeah, I think we need some snack teams. <laughs> wine, well, chocolate. Uh, dark chocolate. Dark chocolate. Seeds, if you want to crack seeds and spit them out like a canoe. Feel real like If you really want to submerge Please. yourself. Bring your chai to mm -hmm. the game. Yeah. But whatever you do, jump on. It'll be really fun. It'll be very, very rewarding. It'll be great to reminisce and live those days that we lived for 52 weeks yeah. um, all together. And I'm we're going to do it multiple times. To yeah so, so this is not so a one-off if you don't get on the first one and you want to and you see how much fun it is you let us know for the next one and everybody who wants to will have a chance to participate in terms of being on video during the live yeah mm -hmm. very exciting very cool mm -hmm. so thank you Nevada. you're welcome um you guys reach out to any of carmen or any of the moderators in the group and we're happy to get you signed on yeah so is that there we go does that wrap Are there, it up and i think it wraps it up is there anything from the audience anyone want to question anything ask anything comment um nora said ordered my shirt yesterday with a donation shirts are to be processed on 11 4 but not sure when they will be being produced and shipped from okay um, we'll clear, we'll clarify that for you, Ms. Doris. We'll find out. Mm. Um, so far, I don't see any other questions. Um, Doris says, let the good times roll. Sounds like an amazingly grand event. Paula says, so glad everyone watched and participated tonight. Can't wait till we meet again. And on that note, it was fun, guys. Glad to see you again. Good to see Looking, you. Thanks for joining us. Things. Would you say that? Thanks for joining us out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah we hope you had say... as much fun as we did. Great fun. Well, thank you all. I really, really appreciate the love we all share each and every day, not just here right now, but throughout the day. Thank you for all of your support. I really, really value each and every one of you greatly. Um, it's just a pleasure to be part of this enormous team, tribe, and grand love. So thanks again. I'm looking forward to next week. In the meantime, I will see you on the other side. I'll see you on Facebook, Twitter, soon Instagram. And, uh, yeah. And see you. you. <laughs> see you next time. Bye. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.